Hey everybody, welcome back to the Let's Talk Review Show, and this week we got four reviews for you guys. We're going to be talking about Grease and its 4K Blu-ray, the movie 2012 and its 4K Blu-ray, the movie The More, and the film Knox Goes Away. And because it's a physical media channel first, we're going to review those two 4K Blu-rays first. Let's start it off with one of the most famous movies of all time, 1978's Grease. This is probably the most famous musical of all time. It's the highest grossing musical of all time. It only had a $6 million budget and it made over $370 million at the box office in 1978. Makes a lot of sense. It stars John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. John Travolta the year before this actually did Saturday Night Fever and the number one song of 1978 I believe was a song from Saturday Night Fever and the number two song of 1978 was a song from Greece. So John Travolta was probably at the height of his powers in the 1970s. You know, I wasn't there at the time but from what I'm able to gather from my mom and my aunts from that time is that John Travolta was really on top of the world and Olivia Newton-John was not that far behind him at all and it makes sense that they would be the two stars of this movie based on the play that came out before this which features a lot of the actors that are in this movie John Travolta if I'm correct actually even had a small role in the original play but they wanted him for the leading role for this movie and I guess that created a little bit of issues from what I'm able to understand with some of the other actors who were the stars of the original play who didn't get to really shine in this movie as much but it's John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John so it makes a lot of sense why that would happen and of course this movie has some of the most classic songs of all time I might not be the biggest musical fan but growing up in middle school in seventh grade you either had to join band, orchestra, or chorus. And if you weren't in band or orchestra, they just put you in the chorus. I don't know if this is a worldwide thing, you know, want kids to learn music, but that's where I ended up was in the chorus. And that year, the thing we were building up to, because we had like two concerts each year, like a winter to spring one, but whatever one it was, we were building up probably spring because this movie does feel kind of like a spring summer movie. You know, we get the whole entire school year and you know, we were singing the Grease song. So I know all of the songs from the movie Grease. It's just that I'm not a real big fan of musicals in the sense that I feel like the musical parts just kind of break up the plot of the movie. But this movie, because the songs are so good, I actually do enjoy Grease, but I don't love Grease like a lot of other people do. This is another one where I have friends and family whose favorite movies of all time are Grease or are up near the top. So people love this. I enjoy the music. I think it's a very well-made movie. I see why people fell in love with John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. But it's just, you know, it feels very cliche and kind of generic overall as the plot of the movie goes, which is kind of what gets me in the door. I do enjoy the musical sequences. I Like I said, those are earworms, those songs. I enjoy singing along to them. I'm not going to lie. Woo! Hoo, hoo, honey, you're the one that I need. Um, but the problem is I'm not a great singer. I try, though. I do try. So this movie is a classic for a good reason. I understand why people love it. I actually haven't revisited this movie in like five or six years. And when I rewatched it with my wife, I enjoyed it again. It's still not one of my favorite movies of all time. But my wife loves this movie. And just watching her sing along to it and have a good time was enough for me. It's just not one of my favorites. But I was very happy to pick up this 4k blu-ray from paramount and paramount can be very hit or miss i would say that of all the major studios they're the ones with the biggest gaps in quality they'll put out some great looking 4k blu-rays and then they'll put out some awful looking 4k blu-rays so they can be a little lazy at times this one came out in 2018 and honestly it's a really good paramount 4k blu-ray probably one of their best if i'm being honest great slip cover on it i love the colors they pop off i love this artwork that's on it you come inside it's paramount they've been doing it forever a blu-ray in blue and a 4k blu-ray in black and that's what you're going to get with this one all of your extras are going to be on that blu-ray and there are a ton if you're an extra junkie you're going to be so happy with this you get the alternate ending deleted scenes now the alternate ending you know it's a small alternate ending and apparently this is what the director wanted the director also does an intro for the movie which literally feels like he was reading a cue card not enthusiastic at all but you get plenty of interviews looking backs with john travolta and olivia newton john and all of the other actors as well producers directors so much people looking back on this movie it's really what you could ask for if you're a fan of the extras uh not a lot of them i believe were new for 2018 a lot of them are recycled from previous releases but still if you're a fan of grease you owe it to yourself to check out those extras i think you'll be very happy with it i'm always not the biggest fan of like deleted scenes or alternate scenes mainly because you know i believe in an editor and i believe i want to just see the movie that was 
given to us. If there's an alternate film cut of it, I'll always check that out. But I'm not somebody who enjoys like deleted scenes because I just always feel like they're deleted for a reason. But I know people love them, so I think you'll be very happy with that. There's commentary tracks, everything you can ask for if you're a fan of extras. Now, one thing Paramount loves to do is use the same audio for a very long time. Now, this is a 4K Blu-ray that came out six years ago, but I'm not too sure when they started using this Dolby True HD 5.1. But either way, or it's a pretty good one. You know, one thing we'll talk about again with Paramount is always using those Dolby True HD 5.1s, not upgrading the audio, and just reusing the same track over and over, which is fine as long as the track is good. And this is definitely one of the better Dolby True HD 5.1s from Paramount. It's, you know, nothing that's going to knock your socks off, but, you know, this is a musical, and you want to hope that those musical sequences come in crisp and clear, nothing that sounds off or bad, and none of that is here. You know, it makes good use of your channels. It's not the greatest mixed 5.1 you'll ever hear in your life, but it's still pretty well done, and if you're a fan of Grease, you'll have no issues with it. Now, the visuals. I believe the Blu-ray that's packed in here is from the same scan of this 4K, because the Blu-ray really isn't that bad. It actually looks very good. The thing is, when you jump up to the 4K Blu-ray with the HDR... That's just a noticeable jump in the color, I would say. The colors look more dense, they look more fuller. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a brighter movie, but, you know, the bigger gaps with the deeper blacks, the brighter colors kind of in the movie in general, and just looking more bolder and more dense, and just a little bit more vivid, a little sharper, I think that's where you'll notice the improvements. But it's not the biggest jump you'll ever see from Blu-ray to 4K Blu-ray, so it's going to really come down to how you feel about the visuals. Do you want to see it in the best way possible, but still not feel like you're getting that biggest jump? I can understand just picking up the Blu-ray, but I was actually very happy with the 4K Blu-ray. You know, breathing new life into this movie, which, you know, has always looked pretty good. It's always been a very colorful movie. I never really had any issues with the visuals, but still, seeing it on 4K Blu-ray, a musical like this, that's probably the best way to check it out. And Paramount really gave us everything we could hope for with this 4K Blu-ray. It's one of their better releases, in my opinion. Speaking of the audio, I just always want to point this out with Paramount, because they're the best at doing this. Giving you so many different subtitle options, and so many different language options in the audio category. That is always great. I love accessibility options like that, and I really appreciate that Paramount does it. Even if I knock their audio tracks sometimes... I still appreciate them putting the effort to have as many people come to their movies as possible. And if I was going to rate Grease on a score of 1 to 10, this 4K Blu-ray from Paramount, I would actually give it a very solid 9 out of 10. I was very impressed with it. I definitely don't feel like I wasted my money on it. And I can recommend it to you guys if you haven't picked up Grease on 4K Blu-ray. Grab this one. I think it's worth it. And next up on the list is the 2009 film 2012. And we'll be talking about its 2021 4K Blu-ray. Really feel like it was a big miss on Roland Emmerich's part and Sony's part to put this out in 2009. I get it. We were kind of building towards 2012. This was a big talking point back in the late 2000s is that, oh, 2012, that's going to be the end of the world because that's what the Mayan calendar uh, said. And people believed it. I didn't believe it ever at the time. I'm like, there's too much money involved here. The world can't end in 2012. I was a cynic like that even back then. I just, I had no belief at all that it was going to end. And look at us now. 12 years later, still kicking. Uh, who knows what's gonna happen, though, but, but either way, Roland Emmerich, the King of Disaster Movies, directed 2012, it stars John Cusack in this movie, Chidwell Ejiofor, Oliver Platt, and Woody House, and so many people in this movie, and of course, this movie was actually a juggernaut at the box office, it cost a lot of money to make, but it made over 700 million dollars at the box office, this is at the time where disaster movies, they made money, I mean, disaster movies still kind of make money, because they're really just fun popcorn movies, I think that's the big difference between, like, this movie and Titanic, when you're talking about disaster movies is yes titanic is technically a disaster movie but it's also a tragedy a romance you know when i think of a disaster movie i do think of the roland emmerich movies of just you know everything's gonna get destroyed on screen you just hope that the plot is enough to keep you interested and that those special effects are good and that's what a good roland emmerich movie is roland emmerich actually directed my favorite disaster movie of all time the Day After Tomorrow, and I think this movie, 2012, shares a lot with The Day After Tomorrow as far as, you know, the tone of the film, and, you know, what they're going for with the special effects, but I think it just pales in comparison to The Day After Tomorrow. Unfortunately, this is not one of my favorite Roland Emmerich movies, and it's not one of my favorite disaster movies. It's actually kind of disappointing to me. I remember being disappointed when I saw this movie back in theaters in 2009. I didn't think it was a very good-looking movie then, and I don't think it's a very good-looking movie now. Now, the 4K Blu-ray is a whole different story, and when we get to that, there's a lot of good to say about the 4K Blu-ray, but the film itself, it still doesn't work for me. John Cusack, I still feel like, is not one of my favorite actors. You know, he's good enough, and how many times is he going to play a you know, a, a down-on-his-luck writer. You got this in 1408 coming out around the same time. You know, he looks pretty much the same. You know, always looks washed up. He always plays these washed-up characters. 
and I can understand that, but I'm just like thinking, you know, such a you know, low hanging fruit with John Cusack and the way you write his characters and the way you write a lot of these characters in this movie. And, you know, maybe I'm digging too deep because you're there for the special effects. But again, the CGI in this movie, it looks awful. And when you go back to 1996 and Independence Day, that movie looks so much better than this movie that came out well after it. And that's really disappointing, even with The Day After Tomorrow. That movie looks so much better than this movie as well. You don't over-abuse the special effects. You don't put the characters in these unbelievable situations where it's like, nobody could do that. Like, a big character in this movie is somebody who's, like, getting flight lessons. It's like, you got to be the one to save the day. And it's like, holy shit, when this is all over with, if there's something still standing... Let's get this guy in the Air Force, man. He's going to be our best fighter pilot, pilot, and it only took him one or two lessons to learn how to do this. That's it. This guy's the best pilot on the planet. But, you know, I, and I get it. You're there to see these unbelievable situations like a limo jumping in between two buildings and, you know, everything's fine. You know, maybe you're supposed to take your believability out of it, but I just had a real hard time with that because of the combination of the bad looking effects and the bad acting. I mean, I, it just feels like everyone's kind of phoning it in. Again, maybe I'm being too hard on this movie. You know, I, I it's still kind of entertaining enough. I watched this one with my wife, Faith, as well. And she was like, you know, she's like, I'm not not having a good time. And I'm like, so you're enjoying it. She's like, yeah, you know, it's fun. It's stupid but it's fun and you know i love stupid movies too and having a good time with them but for some reason uh, this one just didn't get its claws into me and i was pretty happy when it was over mainly because it feels like it's got three climaxes throughout the film it's way too long you could shave a ton of time off this movie again this is where a good editor would do a great job and i just think that they kind of missed the boat with this movie as far as the quality goes and it's not one of my favorite roland emmerich movies i appreciate roland emmerich he always goes for it uh, he makes, like, uh, there's actually a feature out on the 4K about, like, how he makes the modern epics. And I'm like, okay, I can see what you're saying. He does make these world-destroying movies, whereas, you know, with epics, you know, we get to see the beautiful vistas of the world. I, I get what you're saying, but no, these are not epics by the definition, in my opinion, at least. But you know what? Everyone has the right to their opinion. Uh, I still love The Day After Tomorrow. I still love Independence Day. Godzilla 98 is all right. The Patriots all right. You know, he's got some movies in there that are, they're fine. I know people like Moon from a bunch of years ago. He makes kind of the same exact type of movies in tone if you enjoy that. You know, and as long as you can look past some things that I have a hard time looking past, you'll probably enjoy 2012. And you probably already did enjoy 2012. It's just not for me, this movie. But the 4K Blu-ray. This 4K Blu-ray right here from Sony is the shining example of what 4K technology can do to improve your film. Because you know what? It's a three-disc set. This came out, like I said, in 2021. You know, you get two Blu-rays in here, a special features Blu-ray and the film on Blu-ray with some special features on there as well. There was only three of them on there, including the alternate ending and the commentary track. That's the other disc. You'll get that everything on there. And then a lot of that stuff also carries over to the 4K Blu-ray. But the quality jump from the Blu-ray that came out probably around when the film came out to this 4K Blu-ray is amazing. You know, this is something we just talked about Paramount and how they reuse stuff. Sony didn't reuse anything. Like, you know, they had a DTS HD Master Audio 5.1 on the Blu-ray. The 4K Blu-ray gets a Dolby Atmos track. And that's what sold me on this movie. Somebody in the comment section, again, I don't want to use their name just in case, you know, they don't want me, like, using their name on air. They told me how great this Dolby Atmos track was. So that's why I decided to check out this 4K Blu-ray. Picked it up. I think it was only 13 bucks, 55% off. I was like, great. So Sony 4K Blu-ray, I'm sure it's good. And sure enough, it's a great 4K Blu-ray. That jumping quality from the Blu-ray to the 4K Blu-ray, is insane in quality because it has that late 2000s look that I just hate about movies where movies just looked very ugly and the 4K Blu-ray was able to in, was able to fix almost all of that it's still a little too warm looking for me the movie overall but again the CGI is bad that's not the fault of the 4K Blu-ray these visuals are such a big improvement from the Blu-ray to the 4K Blu-ray the 4K Blu-ray cannot fix bad CGI in fact it's just going to draw your eye to it even more that's why I just say you know bad CGI ages way worse than you know old practical effects again my opinion some people might feel different about that but I don't think this 4K Blu-ray did the special effects department any favors but it did make this movie look so much better in detail skin colors skin tones just a little too warm for my taste but either way sony did a great job with the 4k blu-ray that's a huge jump from blu-ray to 4k blu-ray and one thing we don't ever really get to talk about you know the audio is a huge jump as well you know from dts hd master audio 5.1 to dolby atmos it is one of the best atmos tracks that you'll ever hear uh is it the best one no but it is very very well mixed it passes what i like to call the helicopter test if a movie's got a helicopter in it, it 
if you could feel like the helicopter is floating above your head and you can hear it spinning around your room and making good use of your channels, it's a well-mixed audio track that somebody actually put some effort into, and they damn sure put some effort into this Dolby Atmos track. It's something that, you know, should be commended to go along with those great extras and the great visuals. Like I was just saying about the extras, they're on this Blu-ray, uh, and then you get some on the other Blu-ray and some on the 4K Blu-ray great extras out there now some of them definitely date this blu-ray because the blu-ray menu system when you jump to the 4k blu-ray it's night and day i mean these were when they were trying to have these interactive menu systems you saw it with like batman begins in the dark night just wasn't working for me i just felt like it was too low technology and having them out here now it just feels so sluggish to get through um you know it has some cool ideas i pe i appreciate those like uh what do they call them side by side play by play where you can like interact with the movie while you're watching it Great idea, having an interactive Mayan calendar. Great idea. Just don't think the technology necessarily works for it. And then when you go to the 4K Blu-ray, obviously, a much cleaner menu. Uh, you know, I just kind of miss the creativeness of the menus. We don't get that anymore. Now everything's kind of simple, which is fine, you know, as long as everything works. But, you know, I kind of miss them actually trying things like with the Fight Club and menu. And I appreciate the effort with the menu system with the old Blu-ray. But it definitely hasn't stood the test of time. But either way, or... Uh, you just get so much with this 4K Blu-ray and the extras, the visuals, the audio. It's a big improvement over the previous Blu-ray. Everything you can ask for from a 4K Blu-ray, and it still holds up three years later. And what would I give this 4K Blu-ray in a score of 1 to 10? I would give this one a 9 out of 10 as well for different reasons than Grease. But either way, both of them I can definitely recommend you pick up on 4K Blu-ray. And the next movie we're going to be talking about is The More. And if you guys watched the show last week with me, Frank, Mid-Level Media, Ken and Ashley from Sledgehammer Horror, and a bunch of other great people who appeared on there as well, we were actually talking about the movie The More because Ken had that in his, well, Ken from Sledgehammer Horror. He had that in his top five 2024 horror movies of the year so far. And he's like, you know, you can't watch this right now. But he had a hookup that could help him watch the movie. And he's like, I can give you guys the contact if you want. And if you want to watch the movie and review it, you can. So I reached out. And thanks to Ken from Sledgehammer Horror for, you know, letting me know that, giving me his contact and giving me the availability to watch this movie. I really do appreciate it because... This is a folk horror movie that I guess technically was released at some film festivals last year. It's the directorial debut of Chris Cronin. This is a folk horror movie. This one really is an atmospheric horror movie. And when Ken was describing that, I was like, this sounds like a good movie. I think I'm going to really enjoy it. And I did really enjoy it overall. Now, it has some flaws in it, but still, it's a decent movie that you should check out when you can definitely finally check it out on you know on your own i still think it's a very well made movie it's got that sense of dread it builds up so so well and honestly it builds up to a fantastic final scene that's something a lot of movies you know kind of forget about it is if you can leave somebody with a lasting image and this image ever since i saw the movie of what the final shot of the movie is will stick with you but what is this movie all about well we start this movie off we kind of get a flashback from 1996 we see a boy get kidnapped and we assume murdered and then of course we jump 25 years later the father of that boy he approaches the girl his son's friend and you know now she's a podcaster but he thinks that she's probably good at investigating and he's like we got to go into the moor i believe that's where my son's final resting place is I need you to help me investigate it. And she's like, that's not really what I do. But I think she has her own sense of guilt. She's like, okay, I'm going to do it with you. And this movie, it's beautiful to look at. We kind of cycle between, you know, found footage and actually some beautiful cinematic shots. Now, there are some times where I feel like we linger with the found footage for a little bit too long. And this is where I feel like the movie kind of has some of its issues. Is It's probably a little bit too long where I feel like you could definitely edit a little bit out. I get that you want to build up the atmosphere and build up that sense of dread. But sometimes it could be a little bit overkill, and I feel like this movie definitely has some of that. The acting is overall pretty good. You know, not from everybody, but overall, it's pretty damn good acting. The atmosphere that it builds, it does a fantastic job. It's a well-constructed, well-made movie. I definitely enjoyed my time with it. You know, it's definitely got some flaws in there, but still, when this movie is available, it does kind of feel like the kind of movie that does end up on Shudder and will find its fans. People are going to be fans of this movie. And you're looking forward to seeing what Chris Cronin can do next because he did a pretty damn good job directing this movie, and I hope more people get to see it, and I can recommend it. What would I give this film? A score of 1 to 10? I would give this one a pretty solid 7.5 out of 10. Definitely worth your time. And another movie that was recommended to me, I believe it was by Mr. Smelly Potato, who picked this for one of his favorite Michael Keaton movies. I love Michael Michael Keaton. I saw it just ended up on Max. That movie is Knox Goes Away, which is also directed by Michael Keaton, who you don't really think of Michael Keaton, the director. He has directed one other movie, 
besides this movie, uh, which I actually haven't seen. And again, my wife Faith wanted to watch this one, so I was like, all right, let's fire this one up. And this definitely feels like, you know, the kind of movie you watch on a Saturday or Sunday morning in a matinee. It's not the greatest movie ever, but it's entertaining. It's, it's got enough good plot points in there to keep you invested all the way through the end. It's got a really great premise. That's kind of what makes you think right out of the gate, because you don't really think about this when it comes to Hitman. Michael Keaton is playing an aging Hitman. He's pretty damn good at his job, and he's made it, and he's so good at it, he's made it, you know, to late in life, and he's starting to get those late life problems, including getting a severe case of dementia, almost an accelerated version of that, which is going to really hurt him out in the field, so he's got to kind of get his life in order and kind of bow out before things get too out of hand. He also has a son played by James Marston in this movie. James Marston, a little overacting in this movie, but he did an okay job. He plays his son, his estranged son, who has a kid at this point and it's been so long that his daughter is 16 years old and michael keaton's never met her he's like the last time i talked to your wife you know your daughter was just born now she's 16 unfortunately uh she basically got i guess it was statutory rape that's never really said which way but either way a man knocked her up and you know they have to unfortunately have an abortion because this was not something that they wanted and he wants revenge on him. And that leads to a little bit more of an issue in this movie that I won't go too, too far into because I don't want to spoil this movie for you guys. That's like the basic premise of this movie is that Michael Keaton, he's aging out. He's getting dementia. And he wants to just, you know, close those doors, make up with his son as he, the best he can at least. And, you know, try and get to the finish line. And, of course, there are some twists and turns throughout the movie. One big twist towards the end was pretty obvious to me. Again, this movie does follow a lot of cliches. Um, I don't think it's one of the greatest movies ever made. It's very well edited. I think Michael Keaton did a good job with the direction. I think some of the actors, you know, they're given too much because Michael Keaton's an actor. I think he gives them too much grace, and he should have probably reeled them back in a little bit because some of the performances will not blow you away, and that's a little disappointing. Of course, Michael Keaton's in this movie and he's always stellar and he's great in this movie as well this is the kind of old man michael keaton performance i love to see and he's great throughout the entire film and i think he gives by far the best performance in this movie but you know i think i would have liked a more memorable score in this film that really would have helped move it along a little better it's got some pacing issues this kind of feels like what they used to call an airport novel you know you can read it on a plane real quick and enjoy yourself this is the movie equivalent of that if you watch this on a plane i feel like you won't have wasted your time i feel like it's a good enough movie with a good performance at the center of it it's just nothing that's gonna knock your socks off and if i was gonna give this movie a score of one to ten i would give Knox goes away a pretty solid but nothing great seven out of ten and that's gonna do it here for this week's episode of the let's talk review show as always i hope you guys enjoyed this show and if you did don't forget to hit that like button hit that subscribe button turn notifications on share this video if you guys could we also have channel memberships if you like to join that we have a friends of the channel tier a producers tier where you're gonna find john doe juggalo and jason martin a director's tier where you're gonna find frank from frank's media and reviews and mr smelly potato but guys if you got no money to throw our way don't you worry about it at all all we hope is that you enjoyed this video and if you did get out in the streets tell your friends about us and then we'll be seeing you around <laughs>